Now, I mean, this was 82, so it was pre-end of the 82, Cold War. it was published in 82, but yeah. I started the work around 78. Yeah, yeah. I, I always take a long time to write my books, so four years is mm -hmm. a sort of standard mm -hmm. uh, time for me. Um, now, that was even before the concept of sustainability had been uh, been, been uh, coined, but when you talk about holistic systems thinking, is that something similar to sustainability, what we now call sustainability? Yes, well, this is, 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 this is a tricky question. First of all, uh, let me tell you that just uh, before we started this interview, I went to my bookshelf and looked up the index in the turning point and as I had expected didn't find sustainability there. The term was actually coined by Lester Brown in his book which was called The Sustainable Society and it was published around the same time as the turning point and there he defined uh, a sustainable society as one where we can um, uh, satisfy our needs without diminishing the chances of future generations. And that then became sort of the standard definition with the Brundtland Report on Sustainable Development. Uh, and uh, I didn't know about that when I wrote The Turning Point, that that book hadn't been published. So I talked about uh, the chapter which I would now give the title of sustainability or something like that, you know, toward a sustainable future, I called um, the rising of the solar age or the transition to the solar age, you know, something mm. like that. Mm. And that was also in conversation with Hazel Henderson. Who that's, some... that's right, who was one of my advisors. Mm. Now, the question of uh, systems thinking and, and sustainability uh, is, uh, I think, requires a rather elaborate answer. Um, first of all, let me say that Lester Brown's definition of a sustainable society as one where we can uh, satisfy our needs without diminishing the chances of future generations uh, is a definition that I see now as a moral exhortation that is very important morally but doesn't give us any clue about how to do it. You know, how do we build a sustainable society? And this is, I think, why there's a lot of confusion about sustainability, even within the environmental movement, let alone the business world and, and the political world. Uh, to me, the key to an operational definition of sustainability, which is what we need, I believe, the key is to realize that we do not need to start from scratch but can take nature as a model. Nature's ecosystems are uh, models of sustainable communities. They are communities of plants, animals and microorganisms that have evolved over billions of years so as to maximize their long-term survival or sustainability. In fact, when you study the biosphere from the point of view of biology and ecology, you find that one of its outstanding characteristics is that nature has sustained life for billions and billions of years. So a sustainable human society should be one that is designed in such a way that it does not interfere with nature's inherent ability to sustain life. So our technologies, our uh, business organizations, our economies, our physical structures, all that, our lifestyles should be designed in such a way that they do not interfere with nature's ability to sustain life. Now this definition is operational because the first step naturally must then be to understand how does nature sustain life and this is what I've come to call ecological literacy. We need to become ecologically literate to understand the basic principles of organization that ecosystems have evolved to sustain life. Uh, principles like uh, the fact that matter is being constantly recycled, that energy flows from the sun, that diversity assures resilience, that uh, the basic pattern of organization is a network pattern. Principles like this are principles of ecology and the interesting thing, to me the fascinating thing, is that when you study these principles or basic concepts in detail, then you will find that they're really the basic principles of life. 
This is not only how ecosystems organize themselves, but also how individual organisms organize themselves. When you talk about ecological cycles, so there is a flow of matter and energy. Well, within the organism there's also a flow, that's, that's the process of metabolism, which is today the sort of defining process of life. Uh, the networks that we observe, the food webs, for instance, that we observe in ecosystems, are mirrored by the network structures within individual organisms, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the study of sustainability then leads us to asking how do ecosystems work, and that leads us to ask how do living systems work. Mm -hmm. And we need a systemic view and this is the big change in biology that is happening now and has you know, started maybe 10 years ago or so, <coughs> that, that we are shifting from a view that focuses on objects, on constituents of organism, organisms and shifts toward uh, a view of patterns, of processes. And not that we we have we can forget about you know proteins and and dna and so on we need to study all that but um we need to know how all these constituents work together how we need to know the basic processes they are involved in and how these processes are interconnected in network fashion so the systems view of life is really at the very basis of understanding sustainability